Metro Count, the traffic data specialists. Having convinced myself that I'm dealing with a good quality, quality data set, we can drill down to the events that actually occurred around the uh, time of the crash and look at the quality of the individual vehicles that were recorded. So let's uh, tidy up this screen by closing some of these reports. Remembering we're happy that we're dealing with good data. Now, using the same data sets, we're finished with the reference data, we don't need that anymore. Let's go back to the crash site data. New report. I might as well just tidy up the file management list. Right click, remove. So we're dealing with just the crash site data. And this time we're dealing with, this time the report we want to produce is a text-based report called the individual vehicles. Choose next. Choose next again. Now what this does is produces a line by line reconstruction of every vehicle that passed the survey location. And there's many thousands of vehicles because this ran for 10 months and you can see the vehicles whizzing by. I know when the event occurred because I was told. So let's find that time. It's towards the end of the data set. The data was unloaded because of the crash. If I highlight that vehicle record, at 14.29 and two seconds, we had a northbound vehicle traveling 59 kilometers per hour. It was 30.78 meters long using ARX. It's a class 12, which abbreviates to a double road train. So you can see the wheel picture here. It's a one, two, three, two, three, a double road train. So a prime mover pulling two load groups. If I double click that, it pulls up what we call the inspector gadget and we can look at the individual axle events making up that vehicle record. And you can see that the 20, there are, it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 axle vehicle. And so there are a total of 22 hits comprising this vehicle. Now, if I wanted to, I could look at just the detail of the prime mover. So I'd pick up the first six hits, A, B, A, B, A, B, there we are, and go display and there's the prime mover. I could tell you that the prime mover had a wheelbase of 4.56 meters. So we could pin down the prime mover very precisely. But coming back to the entire vehicle, let's just close that, double click again. What we can see here is we got a number of A hits and a number of B hits and they're recorded very precisely. And there's a good correlation of A and B hits meaning that this uh, set of axles was very clean. Now, following this vehicle occurred at 14.29 and two seconds, at 14.31 and 34 seconds was a smaller truck traveling northbound at 84 kilometers per hour. And it was asserted that this particular truck was the one involved in the crash and it attempted to overtake in its dust cloud. The eyewitness accounts were originally going to be challenged, but we were able to demonstrate that in fact those vehicles were present. This three axle truck was in fact going quite fast, 84.2 kilometers per hour. We can see the overall behavior of this vehicle. It's a class five vehicle by producing what we call a speed histogram. It's a chart, speed histogram for just the class five. So we'll uncheck all, turn on the class fives. Now we remember that vehicle was traveling 84 kilometers per hour. If we look at the speed distribution of the class fives, you can see that the 85th percentile is in fact 76 kilometers per hour. So this particular driver was traveling nine kilometers faster than the 85th percentile. So well into the high speed tail of behavior for that kind of vehicle. So relative to other trucks and buses with three axles, uh, that particular driver was operating his vehicle much faster at the survey location. And that correlated with observations of witnesses. 
So yeah, we're able to make quite a few assertions about the quality of the data, back up the witness claims, and essentially in this case, once we'd provided our statements, the defence essentially conceded, uh, realised that there was no point attempting to contest the witnesses' claims, and um, wrapped up the trial a lot more rapidly. None of the two drivers involved in the collision were, uh, had set out that morning to uh, have their lives irrecoverably changed, but that's what happened. There were no winners in this situation, but at least we were able to assist. Because of the virtue of the timestamp data, the black box recording, we were able to assist in bringing this matter to closure.